We're going to discuss patina, P-A-T-I-N-A, -A, patina, patina. So this is a really strange word, and when I was first introduced to this word, 40 years ago, roughly speaking, I thought, what on earth are they talking about? And um, my father said, that's got a lovely patina. We were in, a, in an auction or in a shop, and my father said, look at that piece of furniture, hasn't it got a lovely patina, a lovely patina? I looked at it and I thought, well, I suppose it has. But I, I could appreciate it had a nice colour, a nice finish. And uh, I, I later learnt what a patina is and how a patina is made. So a pat patina, patina on a piece of furniture is quite hard to describe. I'll try and describe it. It is a non-applied finish. It's not a varnish. It's not a painted material that's stuck onto it or powdered onto it. Or painted onto it. It is it is a, an accumulation of grease and dirt, f fundamentally. So an old piece of oak, for example, we're all accustomed to seeing oak which is black or brown or dirty brown, waxy coloured, and that material on the oak is patina, is patina, or patination. Uh, and a piece of oak, if you make a piece of oak furniture without staining it, is yellow. Ye yellow to beige in colour. It's, it's quite bright. So the, the oak as it ages not only gets darkened but with use it grows this patina. So so in, a, in an English cottage or kitchen there would be smoke, there would be grease, animal fats and there would be people handling these pieces of furniture and wiping them down and the patina, the patina would, would gradually accumulate over many years and if you if you see a piece of oak furniture with a good patina, good patina, fundamentally it has to be even in, in application. But it, there is wear, and the wear will be where the most usage would occur. So, for example, if you have a coffer, you would expect the patina to be rubbed on the edges, where the mop touches the feet, around the lock, and on the immediate surface at the front, you would expect the patina to accumulate more around the hinges on the back, on the sides, for example. Um, so you to see the word used much more widely nowadays, you, you see bronze, bronzes described as patinated bronzes. And uh, you have the situation now where pat patina can be simulated. So on a bronze, uh, a manufacturer of a bronze will want to make the bronze look old, and that means they have to apply a patina, a patination, and that, in the in the case of a modern bronze, will be a bronze-coloured paint, and they will make a greeny, fresh-looking bronze old by putting on a dark, browny, browny, bronzy colour. So there is original patina, there is um, even or uneven rubbed patina, accumulated patina. There is the modern or Victorian pat patin patination, patina which is applied to make old, make more recent things look older than they are. And you will find there is a sort of a patina on other things as well, on oil paintings, on, on gilded frames, on the underside of glassware. There is a, there is, you could, you could describe it as a, as a, as a patina, patina. Um, so, so it's a really important word because a piece of furniture with a good patina, good patination is worth more money because it was once considered a sign that an item hasn't been adapted and altered or broken or repaired. Uh, I have had furniture re repaired where you, you have a, a beautiful piece of furniture with an even patina all over it, all the legs, all the handles, all the sides match, other than the, the wear it should have. Let's say a drawer front is missing. You have to put a new drawer front on it. The, f the first thing a dealer will do is take a piece of old timber from another piece of furniture of a similar colour. Um, and the, the wood not only looks more like the old timber, it um, is, is cheaper to take an old piece of furniture to pieces, usually, and cannibalise it, than go to a t timber yard and buy a, a new piece of, or, or, of or hardwood, for example. And then once the replacement goes onto this item needing repair, then the job of the restorer is to match the colour, so that, so a restorer will use stains and they will use powders and they'll use paints and they'll use lacquers and varnishes and shellac to try and get the finish to match. They will use wire wool and sandpaper and blocks to, to smoothen it, to fill the grain, to make the colour match and the, not only the colour, it's the, the shine and the texture. 
It's very, very hard, uh, but it is possible to make a patina exactly the same when it's repaired. Problem is, on the furniture where a patch has been made, it will fade at a different. It will, it will fade differently to the rest of the the, the item. So you, you will often find re formerly repaired pieces of furniture which had a very good patch made, and after a while the the, the patch will become more more obvious. So so I'm trying to explain pat patina. We've talked about it on furniture. We talked about it on uh, wall paintings and bronzes, and and you will find it on clocks and and, and all sorts of other things. And it's a very important part of the business. It's a sign of an item having age. It's a sign of an item having been used consistently. And, and it was once a sign of, uh, as I say, the piece of furniture hasn't been adapted. Uh, beware of people who uh, sell things where the patina has been accelerated or applied, because there are some very clever products now which make things look like old patina. Um, but just remember that the original patina was built up over hundreds of years, often, and the materials in those households that made the patina was, was grease, smoke and grime and, and just general general use. Okay, thank you.